Hey everyone, welcome to our first video about the properties of water. In this unit, we're gonna talk about why water is so important to living things. And this is going to be broken into three different videos. Here's the first one. Um, this is just some background information about what we're gonna be talking about, but we'll be going through all of it in the next couple of videos. All right, what I want you to do here is to think about important properties of water. And after I read them, I'll ask you, which of these properties of water have you ever heard of before? So polarity, hydrogen bonding, cohesion, adhesion, capillary action, solutions or the universal solvent, suspensions, pH, evaporation, the density of ice, and high specific heat capacity. Now you have time to write down any ones that you've ever heard of before. All right, so now that you've done that, we're gonna actually go through and talk about all those different properties of water. But first, let's just think about water for a second. Water makes up a lot of our body. Like almost 75% of our body is made up of water. Our blood is 83% made of water. Our brains and our muscles are about 75% water. So we have to drink water regularly. And I see people with water bottles all the time, making sure that they stay hydrated because you start to feel pretty bad if you're dehydrated. But why is water so important to life? Who, who cares about water? Why, why is it important? What about water makes it important? Well, let's review some of the basic chemistry of that before we continue to talk about water. So atoms. Atoms are a basic unit of matter. They're made up of three parts, protons, which are positive, neutrons, which are neutral, and um, electrons, which are negatively charged. And an element is just all of the atoms of one type of atom put together. So an element is a pure substance that's just made up of one type. So here you can see an example of a hydrogen atom, and here you can see an example of an oxygen atom. And if you were trying to say, oh, in this canister I have hydrogen, the element, that means the only types of atoms in that canister would be hydrogen atoms, and same here for oxygen. So atoms are a basic unit of matter, and elements are made up of atoms. Next, you can have compounds. So sometimes you combine two atoms to make a compound. It could be even more than two atoms. So if you look at water here, you can see it's a combination of hydrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. When you combine those two or more elements, in this case, we have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, you get a compound. And a molecule is the smallest unit of one compound. So in this image here, you just see one molecule of water. And when you have a bunch of molecules of water, you see the compound water, which is shown there with the water droplet. So compounds, how do they even happen? Well, compounds are when atoms are held together by bonds. There can be two types of bonds, ionic or covalent. And an ionic bond happens between metal and nonmetal, but a covalent one is where there's two nonmetals combining with each other and they share electrons. So in this case, you can see that the oxygen actually brings six electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the hydrogen brings two electrons. And both of those atoms would be happy or satisfied if they combine. So what they're doing is actually sharing the electrons. The hydrogen is using this one electron from the oxygen and it's donating this one electron so that um, it can share with the oxygen and same over here. So when you have this example of two or more atoms sharing electrons, you've got a covalent bond. All right, here's a little bit more about water. Like I said before, it's two hydrogens together with one oxygen, and they're bonded covalently. They share electrons, which you can really see in this electron diagram here. Um, they also have what we call a bent shape, and you'll learn more about that if you take chemistry class. But it ends up having to do with the way that the element or the way the elements combine and the way the electrons are shared ends up having that shape, and that has some important consequences for water. All right, one of those things that is important that water does is it is polar. So water's polarity, what does that even mean? Well, water has two kind of ends to it. It has that bent shape, which means on one end you've got more oxygen and the other end is more kind of hydrogen-y. 
So on the hydrogen side, it's a more positive charge because they tend to kind of push their electrons towards the oxygen. And on the oxygen side, it's a more negative charge because oxygen is a little bit greedy when it comes to electrons and it pulls the electrons closer to it, giving it a slightly more negative charge. So if you look at the overall molecule of water, hydrogen is what we call slightly positive and oxygen is slightly negative charge. Um, that un uneven distribution of charges where the hydrogen end is positive and the oxygen end is negative is what we call polar. So when a molecule has two uneven ends, it's polar. Here's a little video about it. Come on, fast forward. How come some insects are able to walk on the surface of a pond, but you quickly sink to the bottom when you try to walk on water? And why do lakes freeze from the top down in winter? In a word, the answer to all of these questions is polarity. Water is a simple molecule made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms, but it is essential to life. In fact, water makes up approximately 60% of the adult human being's body weight. The polarity within those water molecules gives this common substance the properties that make it unique and life-sustaining. Polarity refers to the unequal sharing of electrons within a molecule. For water, the bonding between the oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms within a single water molecule is like a tug of war between a big, strong football player and a cute little toddler. Oxygen is a larger atom with more protons in its nucleus than hydrogen. These positive charges are like a person's physical strength. They are able to attract the negatively charged electrons in the bond, just like a strong individual is able to overpower a weaker individual in a tug of war. So, Oxygen is able to attract more than its fair share of electrons. Because hydrogen is smaller and has less strength or fewer protons, it loses the tug of war and attracts fewer than its fair share of electrons. So the oxygen in water behaves as though it's negative and the hydrogens behave as though they're positive. The bonds within a single water molecule are called polar covalent bonds. Covalent means that the electrons are shared, but as we just learned, Polar means that these electrons are not shared equally. In water, the oxygen acts negative and the hydrogens act positive. Since negative and positive attract, that oxygen is attracted to the hydrogen atoms in neighboring water molecules. A special type of bond forms between water molecules known as a hydrogen bond. And that's... That's what we're going to talk about next, hydrogen bonds. So hopefully that video helps you kind of visualize water's polarity a little bit more and understand it a little bit. Um, so this is getting into the hydrogen bonds and why does that matter? Well, between two separate molecules. So for example, here's one molecule of water and here's another molecule of, of water. Well, here's another molecule of water and here's another one and here's another one. And here's another one. Well, between those two molecules of water, there's this attraction, and that's called van der Waals force. And what that leads to is this thing called hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bonding happens when one water's hydrogen is attracted to another water's oxygen. So in this case, this water molecule's hydrogen here is slightly positive, and it is attracted to this water's oxygen, which is slightly negative. And there's a slight attraction. Now, it's not strong enough to break this polar covalent bond, but it brings the water molecules together in a way that's somewhat unique and makes water really important to living things. So, like I said, attraction between two separate water molecules is called hydrogen bonding. And it's not as strong as the bond that holds the original hydrogen to its original oxygen, but it does bring the water molecules closer together. And I'm going to show you kind of a funny way to remember this. So here's maybe an example of hydrogen bonding. In this case, we have maybe this couple who's dating and this girl who's not part of the couple. And um, the girls in this situation represent the oxygen and this oxygen is bonded to this hydrogen or this guy in the couple. And that bond is not going to be broken. Like she's holding on pretty tight to him. But maybe there's some attraction to this next oxygen that's a little bit further over. And so maybe those 
three people are going to end up being closer together because of that attraction, but it's not going to break the original bond. <laughs> kind of funny, but maybe it helps you remember about hydrogen bonding. Now I'm going to ask you some qu questions and help you practice this new material. So first, which elements are in water? Is it A, two oxygen, one hydrogen? B, one hydrogen, two nitrogen? C, one oxygen, two hydrogen? Or D, one nitrogen, one oxygen? This one is answer choice C. It's actually one oxygen with two hydrogen, so it's called H2O. What type of bonding is in water? Is it metallic, polar covalent, ionic, or nonpolar covalent? Oops, this one's polar covalent, answer choice B here. Next, what shape is water? Is it tetrahedral, linear, triangular, or bent? Water is bent, answer choice D here. What charges within water make it polar? Is it because hydrogen has positive and oxygen's positive? Is it because hydrogen is positive and oxygen is negative? Is it because hydrogen's negative and oxygen is negative? Or is it because hydrogen is negative and oxygen is positive? If you guessed B, hydrogen's positive and oxygen's negative, you guessed correct. An uneven distribution of charge is known as nonpolar, elemental, polar, or atomic. Yeah, if you guessed polar, you were correct. When one water's hydrogen attracts to another water's oxygen, is that love, hydrogen bonding, ionic bonding, or oxygen bonding? If you guessed B, hydrogen bonding, you were correct. Thank you so much for listening and practicing with properties of water.